Tennessee, Alabama. All right. No, no games here. We're, we're not trying to like tackle any market inefficiencies. We just, we, we just need to play the hits. Yes. Um, what we've got a lot to get to. We're obviously going to be breaking this game down on the locks pod, but it, as you look at this from the perspective of, you know, trying to plan your day and trying to get excited about um, the college football Saturday in week seven, like what, what angle of this is exciting you the most right now? Uh, like Tennessee could legitimately win this game, which is not something I thought I was going to say in the preseason. It's not something you've really been able to say all that often. Although there were in 2020, I was getting a lot of attention. I was doing a lot of radio in Knoxville because my bold prediction, you know, we do our preseason ex- like picks, the expert picks. My bold prediction was that Tennessee was going to beat Alabama that year because the game was like Alabama had no buys and it was like their seventh straight game with before a buy. And I can't remember who the week afterwards was, but I was like, that's going to be a prime look ahead kind of think we're just going to whatever spot and Tennessee's going to pull off the upset. And then of course COVID came and it never happened. But, I do think this year, you know, we don't know Bryce Young's status. I expect he'll play. If he doesn't play, we saw, like, last week, Jalen Monroe just, they weren't able to pull away from Texas A&M. And Tennessee's defense, I think, is not nearly as good as Texas A&M's. It's probably more on par with Arkansas's, which we did see Alabama do okay with without Bryce. But defensively, I don't have the same kind of faith that I have in most Alabama defenses in recent vintage for them to stop Tennessee from scoring. I think It's kind of when I watch Alabama right now, I feel like it's Will Anderson or bust on defense. Like if he doesn't get to the quarterback and force a throw or get a sack, you can get to them. And I think that will be the case in this game. So that gives me some concerns. So this is a very fun game between two teams who I think are very good. One of whom is obviously Alabama and one of whom is, I think, a team that I said they're they're not in that elite team tier. But if they go and win this game. I think Tennessee joins the elite team tier. They have to if they win this game. I don't know if there is an elite team tier. Maybe Ohio State's in it, but Georgia's played either. They played down to competition or they're just not elite. And I would lean more towards we've seen enough. It wasn't one game. It's been a couple games. And you mentioned without uh, Bryce Young. What about Texas when they did have Bryce Young and they needed Bryce Young to to bail them out on the road? Like, is that what type of situation you're going to see here? I love this game. I mean, this is clearly the number one pick. I think if anyone who had it would take it. I think it's fascinating because if te- if Tennessee had done what they're doing, which has been impressive, got past the Florida hump, then you know blows out uh, LSU, even with a new coach and a new staff, that's still an impressive win on the road. Even if Bama looked awesome, I'd probably say like this is probably the most you know the the, the best opportunity for Tennessee to get over this hump to knock out to slay this giant. But then you add in the fact that Bama has looked gettable, Mm -hmm. you know, at Texas, especially on the road, even Arkansas. Now, Arkansas was interesting because it didn't feel like Alabama was ever really in jeopardy of losing that game. But Arkansas definitely clawed their way back in and was making it really interesting. But that was you lose your quarterback in the middle of the game. I give you a little bit of a pass for that. But the Texas A&M one's almost inexplicable, even with like what what happened to everybody. Like, how, how are you getting in that position? Couldn't get the stop on defense. You know, it almost ended up losing the game. I I don't know, though. I'm scared still, though, to take Tennessee. <laughs> yes. You know, like it's still Bama, and they've still owned this rivalry, and Tennessee feels like, is there an egg that's coming? Like, I almost feel like I have to see it to believe it. Like, and I would fade Tennessee until then. Yeah, like, this is one of those – it's like, I think this is Tennessee's best chance to beat Alabama in a long time. I also think Tennessee could lose this game by 20-plus. Right. You're muted. Sorry, guys. Um, if it happens, it's because they can't block Bama's rush ends and Bama's able to, you know, kind of play sag coverage. If you think about it, like the only team that is that Tennessee has played that has really, really comparable pass rushers to Bama is kind of LSU, but they handled Pitt okay, right? Like Pitt, Pitt was like Florida's pass rushers are not very good, right? Um, I, I don't know, like. I've been on this Tennessee team a lot this year and they've cashed for me a lot, but half of their scoring drives against LSU four out of the eight were under 50 yards. I mean, that game, I do think Tennessee was still the right side, but like the score doesn't indicate the total level of dominance when you take out some of like the crazy turnover type stuff, which Hey, they earned them, but it's also not repeatable. 
28 to nothing was the lead at Arkansas. And fast start is my key for Alabama. We know that Tennessee in the first quarter, everything like well scripted. You go out there and you get some some quick stops. You don't allow Tennessee to get out there in their first 10 to 15 plays and march down the field, respond to that with some a, a score or two, then that's how you start to flip this on its head. I mean, that's the the home field disadvantage theory. As keyed up as everyone is going to be in that stadium to all of a sudden be facing like a 14 nothing deficit in the first quarter, that that's where things could start to work the other way on you. And that's where Alabama would be able to limit possessions, try to run the ball, try to keep the ball out of Hendon Hooker's hands. I, I know that both teams are so explosive, both of like top five, seven, eight offenses in the entire country. I know that the game is never over, but I feel like I'll be able to take the temperature of this game after the first 15 to 20 minutes and have a feel for what we're going to be looking at coming down the stretch. I mean, 15 in a row and 13 of those have been by double digits. There is a lot of baked in supremacy that is built into this rivalry over almost a generation. So I hot start. Don't be over overcome by the moment. All, all those first 15 to 20 minutes feel really significant to me.